What's up guys and uh, welcome back to another video from me. Uh, today we're going to be doing the first video in my Build It, Tune It, Race It series. Um, so yeah, so in this one we're going to choose a car and then we're going to uh, add all the parts to it uh, that we want. I've been uh, looking through the uh, car list and I've got a few suggestions. Uh, let me just sort these by manufacturer to make it easier. Um, yeah, we've had a few uh, suggestions, uh, but the one I'm going to try is a car that I had in uh, Forza 4 and it went fairly well and I'm interested to see how well it does in uh, Forza 5 now. Um, it's a Mercedes and it is the Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.5 16 Evolution 2. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It comes in at C412, so we've got a choice. We can go C, uh, B or A class. Um, I think A is as high as I'm going to go. I uh, don't want to get any higher than that, otherwise it's going to get outgunned uh, by the uh, hypercars. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and buy this. Uh, it's only 28,000 credits, so it's not going to kill anybody's bank balance if you're doing this as well. Um, not going to bother with the paint for now. We'll just leave it uh, normal and we'll leave it black. And we shall buy the car. So there you go, we've uh, got the car now, and let's back out of that, and let's have a look at uh, upgrading, uh, see what we can do. So I'm going to run through the stages of what I usually do uh, for every car, just to get a base tune, or base build, and then uh, take it from there. So, first thing, first thing I always do, tyres. Tyres are probably one of the most uh, important parts of the build, um, depending if you're building a speed tune or a uh, grip build. Um, on this one, I'll I'm probably going to go towards either B class or maybe A class depending on uh, how much power we can get out of it. Uh, but either B or A, I'm going to want to put uh, race tyres on it. So uh, we'll do that to start off with. So we've got race tyres on there. Let's put it to uh, 454. Uh, and then usually I'll just add uh, max tyre width on uh, front and rear. Um, so we know we've got the most uh, grip we can so we can always take grip away if you feel like we've got too much and we can just add an extra bit of power um, but it always feels worse if you have to take extra power away to add uh, to add grip so we've got the most grip we can uh, wheel rims and wheel sizes we're not going to touch at the moment so always leave them till the end uh, so now we've got the tires sorted and we've got as much grip as we can out of the uh, tire compounds uh, the next thing we go to is the platform and handling um, when I'm tuning the car and building the car I always like to have a car that I can actually handle and steer and drive uh, and much rather have a car I can handle rather than something that's just outright fast in a straight line because then it's a nightmare to get around corners and um, passing people on the straights is the easy bit it's the uh, when you get cars bunched up behind you and you end up getting rammed in the uh, in the lobbies so uh, yeah I always try and make most of my cars grip cars or fairly grippy cars and uh, take it from there so we're just going to go through and we're going to add uh, race brakes Next one, uh, race suspension. I'm not fine with this. I do wish those had a tick box where you could just highlight the ones you wanted and just uh, select upgrade all. It would be so much easier than having to go through each individual one. Because um, I do this quite a lot, to be honest. Um, with roll cage, what I tend to look at is how much weight and then how much it affects the handling. So it goes up to 5.4 with the first one, 5.4 again, and then 5.4. Um, so it minutely improves the handling and worsens acceleration and launch. Um, and it also adds 130 pounds. Um, so for this one, because it doesn't affect the handling that much, um, and it just adds a shitload of weight, I'm actually gonna leave uh, the roll cage as stock and not upgrade that at all at the moment. Uh, and then weight reduction, I'm going to add uh, max weight reduction as well because that's one of the things I find always helps the most uh, along with the tyres is to have the car as light as possible. So we'll add that. So you can see now we're going to go up to B507. Um, so we've got enough room there to add a few extra bits and maybe tinker about with the uh, engine upgrades. So on to drivetrain next. Uh, first thing I always upgrade is the differential. Uh, that never usually increases the PI because all it does sometimes, it doesn't do it on this one, is just um, increase the weight slightly, uh, but as it doesn't affect anything, and uh, we'll buy that because it's going to give us better, uh, better tuning capabilities when we come to tune the diffs. Um, and then the other thing, um, dependent on the car, you can sometimes get away with the stock gearbox depending what the gear ratios are like. 
Um, but for this one, I'm going to uh, go for the uh, race uh, race gearbox, uh, so we can adjust the uh, gears as well. Otherwise, we'll end up skipping that bit of uh, the, the tutorial. You can see that before we've touched any of the uh, engine upgrades, uh, we're at B521, uh, speed 5.9, handling 5.6, uh, acceleration 7.3, launch 7.4 and braking 6. So this might actually make quite a good B-class car. Um, we've got 235 horsepower, going to need a bit more uh, grunt for down the straights, so we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that now. So we've got a good up, we've got engine swaps, drivetrain swaps and aspirations. Um, I'm not going to mess with the drivetrain because we don't want to make it four wheel drive. Um, a lot of the cars that people are using are rear wheel drive, um, so we'll stick with rear wheel drive. Uh, engine upgrades, we'll see what we can fit in. So we, if we're going to stick in B class, that one's a no no straight away, and that one's a no no, and that one's a no no. Although it would be nice to have 562 horsepower, I don't think we could uh, get away with it. Uh, but we can try it out in B class. If it doesn't seem to be competitive, we can always upgrade it to A class afterwards. Um, so engine upgrades, we're going to leave uh, the stock engine in. Aspiration conversion. Now we've got two choices. We've got the uh, turbo, which adds uh, we've got 51 horsepower uh, and adds a tiny bit of weight as well, and gives us a PIF 586. Or we've got the uh, supercharger, which takes us 264. Adds a fair bit more weight, but only takes us to 547. Um, so with some of the engine tuning parts, like the exhaust, you can actually add horsepower and lose weight as well. So we can gain a little bit of that excess weight back by adding some uh, engine upgrades that um, take weight away. Um, I tend to go with the uh, supercharger over the turbo, nine times out of ten. Uh, it's just personal preference, and I find uh, I can get a better tune uh, with the supercharger. So we'll go ahead and install that. So now if we back out, uh, we've uh, done the majority of things, uh, as we're going to make this a grip tune as well, I'm going to add aero, um, I'm going to guess we've only got Forza aero to add on this, um, so you can see it knocks the speed down a little bit, uh, it doesn't really affect the handling but it improves the braking slightly, uh, so we'll add that, and I dare say the rear wing is going to knock the speed down quite a bit as well, oh no, oh, that's taking the wing off, uh, yeah so we haven't got an adjustable rear wing on this, uh, so this is going to be interesting. Um, do we do wing or no wing? Wing or no wing? It adds quite a bit of extra speed and uh, we only lose a tiny bit of handling and braking. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, no wing. I can always add the wing on afterwards and uh, readjust the build as we need to. Right, and on to the fun bit, which is engine upgrades. Um, now when we're going through engine upgrades, um, as we've added the supercharger, the one thing I find that usually works out the best is adding uh, the supercharger upgrade to it. Um, it adds seven pounds, is it seven pounds? No, four pounds, uh, and gives gives us about 30, 30 odd horsepower. Uh, so that seems and it's had a fair bit of torque as well. Um, what you could also do if you do want to upgrade that, uh, the next one I go for on the list is cams, uh, and what I find that gives you a lot more power. Uh, but lessens the torque, so it uh, could take away from the amount of wheel spin that you get coming out of corners. Um, but as I say, you get more horsepower, less torque, uh, and you get slightly higher PI as well. Uh, but for this, I think what we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, supercharger. And supercharger done, so we've got uh, 12 PI left to spend, and now it's just a matter of flicking between all the uh, power upgrades. Exhaust is usually the next one I go for because it gives you power and removes a little bit of weight as well. Um, then I usually try displacement. Uh, no, can't do anything with that one, that takes us over. Uh, and then usually it's any one of these after that, whether it's, uh, it's pistons or valves. Um, it's usually just whichever one we can get in and get closest to uh, 600. So we've got 597, so it is just a matter of uh, going backwards and forwards uh, between each one. And uh, oh, that gives us 599 with 307 horsepower. Uh, might be a little bit down on horsepower, but uh, we'll see how we uh, get on. Uh, try this one, 598 with 307 as well. So that gives us, that takes a bit of weight off as well. And uh, we actually get one PI uh, extra to spend. Uh, so at the moment, sports valves is the one I'm going to go with, uh, unless pistons is any better. Uh, right, so that's, uh, that gives us exactly 600. 
uh, more torque, less weight, and 11 horsepower as opposed to 9 horsepower from the uh, from the valves. So we'll go with that one. So that puts us on 600 uh, straight away. So we're at the limit. Uh, but what we can do sometimes is if we go back into drive train, uh, we can sometimes you can add these on. So you can see we can add that on, and it doesn't actually increase the PI. But if we put the next one on, it does. Um, so yeah, we can get lose. It's only 2.4 pounds, but it's better to lose it than to gain it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and install that as well. And we'll back out. And then last thing is we'll have a look at the tyres and see if we can actually lose any uh, weight with the wheels. Um, even if it's one or two pounds. Uh, you see we lose five pounds on the first one. It takes us over. So we may not be able to actually lose any weight with these. But sometimes you can lose one or two pounds with the wheels and then not increase the PI. Um, I'm going to guess we're not going to be able to because that's uh, only losing two pounds and it's already taken us over. So we'll leave the stock wheels on. We won't adjust the wheel size, uh, and that should be ready to uh, have a run round. Um, so we'll have a look at which test track we can uh, run it on. Uh, I'm not too sure which one we're going to give a go yet. Uh, we shall go with. Where should we go? Where should we go? Let's go to Catalonia, and let's go to the school circuit. I have a tendency to use this one quite a lot because it's got a, uh, quite a few different types of turns in there. You've got sharp turns, uh, sweeping bends, uh, and it pretty much covers all the bases. Uh, it's got a big long straight in it as well, so you can test out top speed. Uh, so yeah, it's got a few different variations of corners, and you can test different aspects of the car out. And it's a relatively short track as well, um, so you can kind of see where your lap times are going uh, fairly quickly. All right, then, so uh, let's see... So we're not going to adjust anything at this stage, we're just going to take the car for a few laps around uh, and just see how it uh, handles initially. Crunch the gears, that's me missing the A button. So hopefully it should uh, should be fairly good, uh, the acceleration doesn't feel too bad at the moment. Brakes are going to need a slight adjustment. Feel the back end going slightly but uh, nothing that's uncontrollable. Seems to actually grip quite well, even though we haven't got a rear wing on. Um, seems to uh, do fairly well. So it's sliding a little bit there, I can feel it uh, as we go on that left hand bend. Uh, gear ratio is going to need adjusting as well. Maybe uh, put them a little bit closer together for the tracks like this so we can uh, get a bit more acceleration out of the car. So yeah, it seems fairly well getting on the power out of the corners. Uh, it doesn't seem to uh, lose the back end too much, which is probably what we expect with uh, race tyres on. Crunch the gears again. We've been doing that quite a lot lately, I'm not too uh, sure why. But yeah, the initial thoughts of this car, it doesn't seem to handle too bad. Uh, and I'd uh, I usually give it two or three laps, uh, just have a drive around, get the tyres, make sure they're warmed up properly. Uh, make sure the tyres are warmed up properly and just get a good uh, idea of how it's going to handle. First lap's always a bit sketchy sometimes with the uh, tyres that are cold. The main things you want to be uh, looking at, uh, or the main things I look at, is uh, how the car turns in. Uh, is it turning, is it as responsive as you want? Uh, how it is mid corner, so as you're in the uh, just hitting the apex is the car sliding uh, the rear end coming out and yeah, losing the rear end or is it uh, understeering and the front's just plowing through the corners and then how it is uh, on exit of the corner as well uh, so when you get on the power does it, you lose the back end totally or does it uh, does it seem to bog down so just trying to evaluate the, how the car handles on the, each of the uh, three parts of the corner so you've got entry uh, midpoint and uh, exit and then also try and look at uh, gearing as well how the gears work and we'll get another idea when we go down the straight and exactly if we get into six and how far the red line we are uh, so give us a rough idea of how much we can adjust that so you can see the, the back end going slightly on that corner that was full throttle around there and me crunching the gearbox again so we've got six gears in this and i've got a feeling we're only going to get to the end of fifth so we can actually shorten the gears uh, quite a bit for tracks like this 
Uh, I've no idea what the uh, what the time's going to be. I'll try and put a fast one in that so we can try and get a, uh, a rough idea of a starting point for us. Uh, and hopefully we can work on knocking a few seconds off. Uh, and uh, hopefully have a good handling and uh, lobby car at the end of it. So yeah, it doesn't actually feel too bad at all. I'm quite uh, quite happy with my car selection on this one. Uh, it handles fairly well. Uh, don't know how it'll be on some of the faster tracks with any uh, 300 odd horsepower, but hopefully it should uh, should do fairly well. So I don't think it's going to be any uh, leadable challenging time at the moment. Um, we've got a what we've got? We've got a 121.3. So we'll uh, back out of this now and we'll have a look at a uh, rough idea where a 121.3 uh, puts us on the leaderboard uh, and see what sort of uh, time we can hopefully try and aim for. So I have no idea what leaderboard times are on this track for this car. Um, I don't know if we're a million miles away or if we're anywhere close. Um, hopefully it won't be too far off, uh, but we'll find out in a moment. Uh, B-Class and Catalonia National. Uh, 121.3, so it's about four seconds off. So uh, four seconds is quite a big uh, margin for uh, <laughs> from number one spot, but then again, the normal top 100 guys is super fast anyway um, but if we can knock maybe a second second and a half off that with the tuning uh, gets within two seconds of it gets down to 119 maybe um, it might be quite a big ask uh, but 119 uh, uh, yeah 119 would put us in the top uh, top 30 so maybe a 120 123 if we can knock uh, a second off uh, that puts in the top 66 so that could actually uh, be a half decent time so yeah, so we got a 123.1 one, I think it was, uh, 121.3, 121.3 yeah, uh, for the uh, lap time. So what we'll do is we'll uh, try and knock at least a second or second and a half off that with tuning, uh, changing the gear ratios. Uh, and now, so um, I'll leave it here for this video, uh, for the build. Uh, as I say guys, if you've got any uh, thing, ideas or suggestions on what we should do differently uh, for the build, um, or how you usually tune it, just add it to the comment section below. Um, and uh, I'll have a read through them and I'll try a few of them out and if uh, they're successful then I'll uh, add that onto the next video. Um, so yeah, the next one will actually go through the tuning stages as well. Uh, what I tune first and how I would put a base quick tune on it of how I usually tune the uh, camera and anti-roll bars and stuff like that just to get a rough feeling. Um, and then the minute adjustments I do from there to uh, get it into race spec. Um, so as always guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to see more like this, I'd appreciate it if you can hit the like button below. Um, the stuff that gets the most likes I know is the stuff you guys want me to continue with and continue doing um, also don't forget to share if you'd like uh, let the world know about this video <laughs> um, tell the world um, yeah and uh, just to do all the usual uh, YouTube goodness and uh, until next time I'll see you all soon Go!